Hello, brothers and sisters. I'm back again for Saturday, November 23rd. And now it's 9.07 a.m. Okay, this is something that I got in my email yesterday, and the person was sending it to several asking to share, share, share. And I said I would if I got, if you give me the, I wanted his source. Okay, so he sent me back this this morning. It was in my box. And it's called End Time News. The Financial Crisis Continues. Linda Hash and Ezekiel 14. Now it is a 48 minute video and I haven't listened to it all but something that uh, he did not say right off the bat it might have been in his um, what do you call it thread the very first story YouTube to delete all accounts that aren't commercially viable starting December 10th okay so we have a date here why December 10th why not January 1st doesn't this sound like the kind of thing you would do in a new year fiscal year I don't know fiscal years don't usually start January but anyway uh, he goes let me blow this up and I'll read it from here his source that I'm on Jeff Byerly's channel which is Holy Spirit Wind. Uh, yeah, Holy Spirit Wind by Jeff Byerly. Okay. So his source is Ethan Huff via Natural News. The author is Ethan Huff through Natural News. Okay. It says, uh, Wait a minute. And it says by Tyler Durden. Hmm. Okay, let me just play this for a few minutes. I hope you're awake. This is Jeff Barley. Uh -oh. Back with you again. And. Can you hear that? That's what I want you that? to do is wake up and I want you to stay awake. And as you can see right here. I got an article about YouTube, and it's going to delete all accounts that aren't commercially viable starting December 10th. Now, as some of you know, I sent out a um, post yesterday that uh, stated that I do have a um, Bright Eon account, which is an alternative to... Okay, I'm going to pause this right here. Um, I would like a vote right here. I'm going to open another channel, either on Bright Eon or YouTube, or if you know of another one. Which would, if you have people you like to go see on another platform and it'd be easier for you to just find me there while you go to find them there give, give me a vote say I go to YouTube to see Linda on WGON you know I go there now and then I forget too often I usually just catch her on here but I may be having to go there anyway so I'm debating should I go to YouTube or should I go to Brideon? I've heard of that and I've heard of another one, but I can't remember the name of it. There are other platforms, so y'all can help me with that. I'm moving on. YouTube, and I'll show you that in a minute. But this evidently is not a joke. Where is it? He's showing a picture of what looks like a screenshot of a YouTube it says YouTube in the middle and the arrow to point to click on to play it. And it looks like two devil horns and hellfire behind it. No kidding. Going on here. Maybe I'll use that as my screenshot. How about that? Yeah. I'll just take me a little clip of this right now. This looks looks like hell. 
It looks like devil horns and hell. Okay, got that. Which I didn't think it was at first anyways, but I kind of wondered how they're going to do this. It really looks like they're going to go through with it. Um, this is obvious censorship. YouTube is planning to silence those who disagree with the political ruling class that have taken sides. Speaking truth to power is now borderline criminal. The censorship continues. And you think, if you think it's bad now, it's going to get much worse very quickly. After the rapture, I am convinced. And um, you guys can read this article. As long as Trump is, remains in power, I don't believe this will happen. But we know what's happened. We were put on, we're still in that seven day or more alert that all communications could go down. Or was it all communication or just internet? Maybe it was just internet. Not sure. I don't remember now. I made a video about that a couple days ago. And now this comes out. And we had the commercial. The end is here, the old man. The end is here. People stealing shoes. UFO up there pulling people up. I mean, it's getting serious, but also, to me, it's very exciting. Okay, I'll let him finish this. The rest of this video is he's talking about other things. It's on Zero Hedge, as most of these articles will be. Um, if you... Okay, I'm sorry. I had interrupted him. He said this article was found on Zero Hedge. Have a YouTube channel of your own. I would highly suggest that you start making plans to get your videos backed up onto your own personal computer. As I have, I, I put them all onto my hard drive. Okay, I'm going to stop this here. Now, I had left a comment for him asking him, how do you download your own videos? I've been using Clip Converter but I don't like them. <laughs> they are the ones that have pushware and try to get you to download Mac Cleaner and Mac Keeper and those things are not good for your they're not good don't download them if you use Clip Converter. I know I can do that I can pull down all my own videos with that the ones I really want that I would want to re-upload to say Bridie on or used to. And of course I can always go there and remake the most important ones that I feel like really were from the Lord like the two rapture message. To me that is the most important message I've received because I found it in scripture. I found all the scriptures that I feel back it up. Maybe not all of them, a lot of them. Other people have found more. And then when I found Isaiah 66, 7, saying, um, before she travails, she gives birth. So that's saying before tribulation happens, the great tribulation, because obviously we're all going through some kind of tribulation are we not we're going to give birth we're going to go the bride is going to be raptured that's a birth and then the great tribulation begins and then the church goes after the sixth seal it is so clear in my mind if you can't see it please take it to the lord and pray over it that message is sure I know it because of the three days of hell I went through after I got it. The devil should have never done that because that made me believe and know for sure he did not want that message up. He wanted me dead. I can promise you he tried. I didn't do a thing. I just held myself 
and prayed, oh God, don't let me do anything stupid, don't let me do anything stupid, oh Jesus, help me, Jesus, help me, Jesus, help me, because the thoughts were coming in so strong, and how, how does the Lord, maybe the Lord allowed it so that I would know it was from Him, so that I would have assurance. Anyway, I'm going to end this one here, so that, uh, you can check this out for yourself and see whatever else he has. It, it is End Time News, he said uh, the title. The Financial Crisis Continues. Linda Hash, I don't know anything about her. I don't know. I'll finish listening to it later. And Ezekiel 14, that's the title. That's the things he covers, okay? So um, I say God bless each and every one of you. Let us all be found worthy to escape all these things that are to come to pass and stand before the Son of Man. Now, you may not be one of the brides, but you can be one of the guests. All you have to do is be found living holy. That means stopping all sin, repenting when you do mess up, and lose your temper. Now, that was I was going to make a video yesterday. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you. Thank you. It's talking about losing your temper. The Lord reminded me it's okay to get angry, be angry, let's see, but sin not, do not let the sun go down on your wrath, or something like that. I'll look it up. Uh, in fact, let's just go ahead and do it now. I want to say this right. Hold on. I'll type in. Be angry. Oh, look, it pulled it right up, but sin not. What Paul says is, be angry, but do not sin. Do not let the sun go down on your anger. And do not make room for the devil. What he is saying here is that we can get angry. The problem is, what we do with the anger when we feel it. Now that's, uh, if, if I click here, if I click on it, it takes me to, I don't know if it's a website I would normally use, but it's called Gross Point, Michigan, Patch. Have you ever heard of that? Patch.com forward slash Michigan gross point don't let the sun go down okay so I can't say that every article they put up is good or bad or otherwise but this is the truth this is I, the reason I was thinking about this is I realized that all my life I up until until I got sick really then I had a my because see when you get a brain injury or illness or brain tumor in a certain area that controls emotions it can cause your personality to change and i had a few of these horrible outbursts of screaming at people that should have never things that should have never come out of my mouth and it just made me cry and cry and cry because I'm not like that I don't do that okay so the Lord has helped me in that area I'm sure because he knew I was very remorseful and everything but but what I was talking to the Lord about was I all my life up until the point of that first outburst I had shoved stuff down my throat and shoved it down and shoved it down when I got mad or someone hurt me or something happened that I should have maybe lost my temper over but correctly because there is a time to there is a time for correction to speak up for yourself to let people know what you did to me was wrong. I forgive you, but I but don't do it again. And however you you know, pray about it if you need to know the words to say. But anyway, 
Don't let the sun go down on your anger. Deal with it. If you have to sit down and write out a letter to the person that day, you do it. If you think, if I do this in person, I'm going to say something I don't mean. And I have done that before. And that backfired on me. Yeah, the person took the letter and told everybody in the family and how horrible she made it sound. I won't go into what I said or how or why it happened. That was how I dealt with my anger. I wrote a letter. Okay, other than that, see that backfired on me. So I never did that again. I would just shove it, shove it, shove it down. Just shove it down. And that's not good either. We have to get angry. We have to let our anger be angry, but sin not. Do you, I hope you understand. It's okay to get mad. You just don't want to lose control. You can say, that made me really angry. And that may be really hard for some people. If they get started, they may keep going. See, I was always afraid if I did that, I would keep saying stuff. And then maybe I would regret what I said. Oh, this is the hard part. That word self-control. The fruit of the Holy Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Self-control. There's nine. Do it in self-control. Let the person know. That made me very angry. If you can't do it right then, wait a couple hours, pray about it, but don't let the sun go down on your anger. Pray, forgive, do what you have to about it. The Lord may tell you to let it go. They didn't know any better. He may say, let it go. You're overreacting. If you're listening out for the Lord's advice, hopefully you will hear his still small voice tell you, calm down, wasn't that big of a deal. Think about it. Things like that. I don't know how he would say that. You know, the Lord communicates to us in so many ways. You may get into your email and find a, a devotion for the day if you sign up for those and it may have to do with that wouldn't that be something that would be telling you do you need to be angry but sin not so I want see I was gonna make a video on this and here you know here it just popped up anyway so uh, okay no 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 thank you okay so I can link this if you want to read anything more about it because um, what does it mean I'll read a little bit what does it mean when Paul tells us in Ephesians 4 26 that we should not let the Sun go down on our anger there are lots and lo lots of lots I think they meant lots and lots of marital and premarital counseling sessions that talk about this in terms of not going to bed angry. Well, yes, this is it's not it's not just about people that are married though. There are several there are even several songs that talk about staying up all night to talk through whatever the disagreement is about. The challenge is that it is often much easier to talk about than actually put into practice. Is it a real mandate on not going to bed angry with your spouse anyway? Not necessarily. However, it does mean several things for our relationship with our spouse and with all of those around us. First of all, it is important to mention that Paul does not say that we can't ever get angry. 
I have heard it said numerous times that it is a sin to get angry, and that is not true. What Paul says is be angry and do not sin. Do not let the sun go down on your anger. And do not make room for the devil. What he is saying here is that we can get angry. Anger is a natural human emotion. Even Jesus got angry with the money changers in the temple. Remember he made a whip and drove them out threw the tables over and their money went scattering and uh, boy the Pharisees got mad about that one but Jesus was angry and he let them know it so anger is a natural human emotion and not a bad one in and of itself the problem is what we do with the anger when we do feel it Everyone reacts to anger a little differently. Some people sulk and get quiet. That would probably be me. Was. Some people scream and slam doors. Well, I've done that too. But not until lately. I I've learned to let it out more. Sometimes I, you know, not real loud, but I shut my door a little harder than I used to. Some people say harsh and mean things. Some people do all of these things and more. Anger can be a powerful and destructive thing. Anger can destroy families, relationships, and even lives. Boy, howdy, that's the truth. Even suppressed and buried anger can do very destructive things. So, if it is okay to be angry, where is the line when it goes too far? According to Paul, even though we will feel anger, we are still supposed to not let evil talk come out of our mouths. But speak the truth in love and speak only things that impart grace. We are called to not let the sun go down on our anger because we should not bury it. Let it fester and hold on to it. See, that's what I always did. Buried it. I don't know about letting it fester. I think I was real good about tucking it away so far. And you see, you do that and do that and do that. It'll destroy your immune system. Yeah. I had to do that all the time with my first husband. Anyway. Um, we are called to deal with our anger in a constructive and grace-affirming way. I know. I know. At this point, some of you are thinking... Yeah, right. If you only knew what they did. You are right. I don't know. But God does. No matter what. I'm liking this article. Aren't you? I think it's so far. So good. No matter what the presenting issue may have been. We should never let anger take over our lives or our relationships. Often, anger is a mask that keeps us from dealing with the real issues. It means we don't have to deal with the emotions that may have actually caused the anger in the first place. Wait a minute. It means we don't have to deal with the emotions that may have actually caused the anger in the first place. Being angry means we don't have to deal with why we are hurt, scared, or frustrated. Now that part I don't get. It is important in the heat of the moment to not let words fly that you might later regret. Sometimes that means you need to take a break to collect your thoughts and calm down 
and there's nothing wrong with that. It reminds me of Sesame Street short on taking and taking a break to cool down and belly breathe. Anger can cloud our judgment and at times we can't even see straight, metaphorically speaking. And it is in those times that we need to take a step back, work on our belly breathing. When you take a deep breath where your belly sticks out, Let it out slowly. Okay. Refocus. Somewhere in there. See, I used to go to therapy because they thought my illness was all in my head. So for 11 years, I was in therapy. Yes, yeah, seriously. Psychiatrists, psychologists, therapists, mental hospitals. Because they had, had to stop me from having all these seizures, right? <laughs> Finally, I found someone that knew what was going on. Anyway, uh, no, my last psychiatrist was a medical psychiatrist. She knew something was going on. She even admitted it to me when I started asking her too many questions. She got mad and she said, Look, Jeannie, the truth is we don't know what's wrong with you, but we got to put something down on paper so the insurance will pay. She said that. They didn't know what was wrong with me. As she was prescribing Tegretol, which is an anticonvulsant, also good for bipolar. So they had me down as bipolar type 2. Okay in the morning, crashed by noon. Took a nap. Kind of okay in the afternoon, crashed by 7. So they called me. I never got manic, <laughs> ever. But I was bipolar type 2 for a while. Yeah, I was. <laughs> no, I wasn't. <laughs> they didn't know. They didn't know. Okay. So I've forgiven them all. I've had to do a lot of forgiving. I got angry at a lot of medics and doctors and nurses. Had to forgive them all. Anyway, shall we move on? If you are de Let's see. Okay, we folks, that's how I learned to breathe. That's where you counted to, uh, let's see, five. So your belly's poking out anyway, and then count to ten going out. It slows down your breathing. It really does help. Okay. If you are dealing... Okay, that was work on our belly breathing and refocus ourselves as disciples of God and not people under the power of anger. We can't operate under the power of anger. It's a very powerful emotion. If you are dealing with anger in your life, I encourage you to ask God to help you work through it. Spend time in prayer asking God to show you the reasons behind the anger and begin to let the anger go. The next time you get into an argument, be intentional about your words and your thoughts before they spill out and you can't take them back. On some show, I when I used to watch TV, I remember the saying, think of your words as toothpaste. Once you say them, you can't put the, once you squirt that toothpaste out, you cannot get it back into the tube. Actually, you can. I learned how <laughs> because of that show. But I couldn't tell you what show I saw that on. One of the last ones I ever watched. Anyway, point is, once those words come out, they're out there. You can apologize. You can say, I'm so sorry. I didn't mean that. But 
Once they're said, they're said. Okay. The next time you get into an argument, be intentional about your words and your thoughts before they spill out and you can't take them back. Say a quick prayer asking God to give you peace, calm your heart, and let you speak the truth in love. For a Christian, it is impossible to talk about anger without talking about forgiveness. And that is what we will look at tomorrow. God bless Reverend Liz R. Kellyan at WWW Living Hope. I will leave the link. You can subscribe to this if you want. If I didn't already have so much coming in, this might be a really good thing to subscribe to. It'd be a daily lesson, but there again, I can't know what they would say in the future about what things, you know what I mean? But this is spot on. This here is spot on. And with that, I'm going to say I plead the thank you, Jesus. I want to say thank you, Lord, because yesterday I was talking to him about this. Stuffing, stuffing anger and how bad it is for our bodies. You don't want to do that, but you don't want to do the opposite and blurt out stuff you can't take back. Okay? And at this crucial point in time, we want to do it right as best as we can. Be ye holy, for I am holy, I think is how Jesus put it. Be perfect, even as your heavenly Father is perfect. We will be completely when we're changed and glor get our glorified bodies. In the meanwhile, we have to try to do our best. And that is hard. But we can do it because we're filled with the Holy Spirit. And if you're not yet filled, you just keep asking Jesus to keep filling you more and more with his Holy Spirit. When you do your prayer time, say, Lord, I'm waiting. I'm waiting. I want to be filled. I submit myself fully unto you. I repent of all my sins, everything I've done today, anything I did in the past that I've not dealt with. Help me deal with it. Please, Lord, fill me with your Holy Spirit. And give me the evidence of speaking in tongues. That's how you know for sure you're filled. Even if it's just a little bit. If you feel anything coming up, you say it. And don't be all blown away and surprised by it. Okay. This just blows my mind because I was talking to the Lord about making a video about this. And here this comes up. Well, he reminded me to make a video about it. So I looked up the scripture and it led to this. Isn't that great? He's so wonderful. He is so worth everything we have to go through. Is he not? All right. I plead the blood of Jesus over this video, my computer, my internet connection, and over each and every one of you, all your devices, and your internet connection. With that, I will say bye for now. I will talk to you later.